excited to be here. And thank you, um, Maria, for inviting me to have me on today to host this workshop. I'm super excited to talk about how to travel gluten-free. So um, just a little bit, oh, actually, I'll get a little bit about me in a second. But um, so I wanted to tell you how I started how to travel gluten-free. I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version because I don't want to bore anybody. Um, so um, I became, I found out I could not eat gluten because I'm celiac. Um, and so that was seven years ago. And before I had celiac disease, I really, really loved to travel. And so I started traveling all the country, doing different things. And my first trip with the after I found out of celiac disease was a road trip. I did the entire Pacific Coast Highway from the most Southern point in California all the way up to Olympia Park. And that is an amazing road trip. If you do one big road trip in your entire life, do the Pacific Coast Highway, absolutely stunning and amazing. Anywho, I was in Southern California trying to find food that I could eat safely. And I was like, this is really hard. And I don't know if you are celiac, please put in the chat if you're celiac, if you're gluten-free because it makes you feel better if you're gluten intolerant or if you have an autoimmune disease, like please let me know why you, you're gluten-free because that's always like a good, um, I can kind of tune my workshop to that. Um, anyway, um, I was sitting there thinking, I know other people in this world are gluten-free and love to travel because there's 8 billion people in this world. And um, so I went, um, I just went online to try to find resources on like, how do I write trip gluten-free? How, like, you know, how do I camp gluten-free? Like all this stuff. And nobody told you how, like everybody was just telling you, here's some good, great places to eat in Chicago, which is fine. But if I'm not going to Chicago, that doesn't help me. So I created Travel Gluten-Free for, uh, to help other people who are gluten-free to um, be able to travel independently and not be scared. Because if you don't have celiac disease and you're not familiar with it, if you get glutened, which is what we call it, um, or if you get cross-contaminated, you're sick for a week to 10 days. Like, like best case scenario, you're sick for three days. And so it, I, what I tell people without being too descriptive, it's a cross between the flu and food poisoning. So imagine all the body aches from the flu and all the other stuff you get from food poisoning, that is celiac disease. I mean, so you can tell from that, you, you can, it can definitely wipe out your entire vacation. So um, that's why I started to travel gluten-free. And I started with my podcast and then I created my blog. And now I also have my book, The Guide to Traveling Gluten-Free, because I wanted to put this so that people could just grab the book, use it to plan their vacation. All right. So this is a little more about me. Like I said, I was, I've been celiac for um, seven years. I've traveled to over 12 countries without getting sick on vacation. Um, I create content based on my experiences because apparently um, there are people out in the travel world that you know, just take information from other people's blogs and create it. All of the stuff I create is all based on my personal experience traveling. And um, all the products I recommended, I always test first. I never have a product or endorse a product without testing it and absolutely loving it. Um, I have had people send me products that I, I have not, I had not put on air because they just weren't up to my high quality standards. I am the producer of Travel Gluten Free Podcast and the author of the Guide to Traveling Gluten Free. And if you want to find me on all my platforms, the easiest way to do that is just to go on Google and to search the hashtag TravelGFMe, and you'll pull up all of my social platforms. All right, so this is what you're gonna learn from this workshop. And as we're going along the workshop, feel free to drop questions in the chat and Maria will just um, stop me and ask me and tell me your questions so that I can answer them as we go along in the workshop. And please put whatever questions you feel you wanna ask. Don't feel like your question is too small or that your question is dumb. Like any question is acceptable. I am here to help you and to support you because being gluten-free is really hard when you have to travel. And it's all about the knowledge you need to be independent. So a quick little story is um, I was at the first in real in life gluten-free um, festival three weeks ago in Salt Lake City in Sandy. And so Adam, if you were there, I may have met you. Um, so I had my booth travel gluten-free and a couple came up to me and said they had met me at the My Gluten Free World Expo, like pre COVID, and we're really scared to travel because you can get really sick when you're gluten free and you get cross contaminated or, or glutens. And so they said they were listening to my podcast and they were so inspired. They took their first travel vacation three months ago. So that was like, ah, oh, I was like so excited, I had tears in my eyes. Like that's what it's all about, right? It's just the independence to travel. So today you're going to learn the basics, the very basics of how to find a safe gluten free restaurant, tips on traveling on road trips. Um, advice on how to choose a place to stay when you're gluten-free, how to cruise gluten-free, camping, and tips on flying gluten-free, because that's a whole nother bowl of wax. And also, I wanted to let you know, 
a lot of these tips and um, processes that I'm talking about can be applied to any food allergy that's out there. So not just gluten-free, but if you're like corn-free or dairy-free. So a lot of these are very uh, global because they're processes you can apply, not just do this or do that. All right, so general gluten-free tips. So this is what I see a lot of people experiencing. So one is you have to be proactive. A lot of people are like, well, I don't want to ask questions or ask the, you know, my waiter to go back and ask the chef because Bob, because I feel like I'm putting them out. No, your health comes first. And I cannot tell you how many stories I have heard of people not being proactive and then they get sick and it literally ruins their whole trip. I recently read a story um, on the Find Me Gluten Free app of a woman who uh, was at the a buffet and the chef came out and told her what she couldn't eat, but she said he didn't sound really great and he didn't sound really sure and he was very snippy with her and she ate those things and she was on her honeymoon and she got sick her entire honeymoon. That is not acceptable. If you ever feel uncomfortable, I'm going to tell you what to do in the next few slides, but be proactive. You usually have to educate others on you, what you need and what you don't need because everybody's different. And a lot of people, unless they're in, unless they know somebody or they have been well trained, don't understand food allergies and why it's so important. Don't accept, I think it's gluten free when it answer your question. I got that last night. We were eating out at Slapfish and there was this young kid behind the counter. He was probably 16. And I told, asked him, does this meal have gluten in it? And he's like, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. And I said, well, can you please check? Because it's medical. It's not a preference for me. Ask questions until you feel satisfied with the answer. And, um, and if they won't answer you, then I'm going to tell you what to do in a few slides. Tip well when you get great service. This is really important because you want to show people if they're going out of their way to help you that you appreciate them with a good tip. Watch out for hidden gluten in food products such as sauces, gravies, dressings, marinades, and cosmetics. Yes, cosmetics, because your skin is the biggest organ in your body. And when you put cosmetics with gluten on your skin, you can have a a bad reaction anywhere from itching to hives. So that's really important, um, especially with your toothpaste. So check your toothpaste, that's a, that's a big one. All right, so first I'm gonna chat about how to find a safe gluten-free restaurant. And remember, if you have questions, please put them in the chat and Maria will stop me and get your question answered for you. Um, so the one number one thing I tell people if you are gluten-free is to download the Find Me Gluten-Free app. I've had Jason Elmore, who was the creator of that app, on my show twice. So if you go to Travel Gluten-Free Podcast and type in Jason Elmore, E-L-M-O-R-E, -E, he's actually a resident of Portland, and I'm going to be moving to Oregon next month, so I'm going to see him in person. I'm super excited. Anywho, this is great. It has a free and a paid version. If you travel, and I'm sure you do if you're here, Get the paid version. It's like twelve or fifteen dollars a year. It is worth its weight in gold because it will literally what you will. You can search where you're at. You can search where you're going. So what I do is I get on the Find Me Gluten Free app. I search for where I'm going, like a week ahead of time, to get an idea of what food is there if they have good gluten free food, and it's all rated by people who are gluten free. So that's really important. So definitely download the Find Me Gluten Free app. Another great way to find safe gluten-free food is to use the hashtag gluten-free with the name of the city. So a great example of this is I was in London pre-COVID and I was looking for um, gluten-free places in London and I knew there was a bunch of them. So I looked on Instagram for hashtag gluten-free London and I saw all the people who posted under that and found this amazing bakery that was two miles away, but I was so tired because we just got in, I didn't get to go to it, but I know it's there for next time. All right. So, um, Another thing is you can do is find a local gluten-free blogger. So I'm local in Salt Lake, but I've also been to many places. So I, if you ever need advice on a place that you're going on, you know, is this a good place to liquidity? Is this a good place to travel if I'm gluten-free or if I need to have a specialty diet? Um, I will get, I will let you know if I know that, if I know that town or not. And I do know a lot of different towns and if they're good and gluten-free or not. So these are three basic things that I use to help me find safe gluten-free restaurants. Okay, road tripping gluten-free. All right, so when you road trip, 
Um, this is actually one of, an easy way to travel when you're gluten free because you can bring your food with you. I mean, you can bring your food with you anytime, but you can bring whole meals with you when you're road tripping. And when you pack, when, and you don't have to bring a, your whole road trip food with you, which is nice because with road trips, you can stop at grocery and health food stores along the way to pick up food as needed. So you can, you don't have to carry a whole bunch of food with you, but you do want to know where you can stop along your route. And one of the things you want to be careful of is when you're driving through rural areas, the more rural the area it is, the less chance you have of finding gluten-free. Not that you're not going to find gluten-free, but most likely you're not going to find gluten-free in rural areas. They just don't have the resources or like really the knowledge in rural areas a lot of, a lot of times. Not every time there are exceptions. Also, you want to pack your food in your car in plastic storage containers to conserve space. You want to get the flat ones. You don't want to get the big boxy ones. I found the flat ones are the best because you can easily see it's everything. Your food's in one layer and you can easily see everything. You can also get one of those like little cold storage bags, which are really great. And the best um, cooler, I'm just blanking right now. The best kind of cooler to get is, um, oh my gosh, I'll think about it. But it's, it's a really good cooler. It's expensive, but it's really good. Um, anyway, so food to bring on a road trip, canned goods, shelf-stable packaging. Like I love to get um, dairy-free, like um, plant-based beverages that are in the aseptic containers, which are really great because I don't have to refrigerate them until I open them. Um, and they also sell them also in single serve, which is awesome because I don't have to worry about refrigeration at all. Um, use dry ice, not regular ice because regular ice melts and I've had food get ruined by the water in my cooler. Um, small containers of dairy-free milk, like I just said, protein bars, cookies, and drinks that are not coated with chocolate or something else, because that coating will melt quickly in your car. And let me tell you how much of a mess that is when that gets on your car. <laughs> I've experienced that before. And camping food. So there, I have a whole um, podcast episode and blog on gluten-free camping food. So you definitely want to check that out because there's certain brands that actually have certified gluten-free which is completely safe for celiac. So if it's just labeled gluten-free, that means it might not be safe if you're celiac, but if it's certified gluten-free, it is safe for you if you have celiac disease or if you're very sensitive to gluten. So foods to avoid on a road trip, stuff that breaks easy like eggs, rice crackers. So like I take almond crackers with me instead because they're more dense and they don't break. Bars with coatings, like I said, chocolate. If you get chocolate, buy it and eat it right away because chocolate is another one that makes a huge mess. Um, Alcohol, because you just don't, if you get pulled over, every state is different. So if you get alcohol, make sure you're drinking it at the restaurant and try, try not to take it with you. And then unless you're camping, that's the one thing I do is like, if I'm camping, I'll buy it at like a convenience store and then bring it to my campsite. Um, Water-based ice, like I said, dry ice is the best to do on a road trip. Okay, so choosing a place to stay. A lot of people, um, oh, and this is a picture from the uh, Rock in Rome. So this is Paula, if you know her, she's really great. She um, uh, was working with me as an influencer and for one of my clients who had has a really cute boutique hotel in Moab, and this is her here. Um, so choosing a place to stay, a lot of people that have food allergies or that gluten-free like to pick places that have a microwave and a fridge at a minimum. Like you don't have to have a whole kitchen, but if you do, that's even better. If you do have a whole kitchen, make sure you clean all the stuff in the kitchen or bring paper plates because cross-contamination is an issue with being gluten-free and cooking with somebody else's stuff, especially stuff that can get caught. Like don't ever use someone else's waffle maker or things like that that are hard to clean. Um, but at a minimum, I always stay in places with microwaves and fridges because then I can take my food that's in my cooler and put it in the fridge. Book with a dedicated gluten-free hotel air or bed and breakfast. So I recently interviewed, um, oh my gosh, the Inn Berlin. I'm, I'm blanking her name right now. But if you look on my podcast for the Inn Berlin, that is a completely dedicated gluten-free bed and breakfast that is in Berlin, Maryland, not Berlin, Germany. And um, she's great. Like she creates amazing food. And you can go there and eat gluten-free and not have to worry about it because she does not have any gluten in her kitchen. So those places are great. There are not that many of them, but you can find them. Um, it, so gluten-free bed and breakfast might cost more, but it does cut the your time down of having to drive back and forth to accommodations, all that stuff. So it just really depends on how much time you have at the place you're staying. And if you want to save more time, it's better to stay at a place that can accommodate your food preferences and um, food like allergies and things like that. Um, you can use a gluten-free travel agent to book hotels. And the travel agent that I use, I absolutely love is Ellen from Gluten-Free Vacations. We actually just did a live together yesterday. So you can see that on my Instagram. And she is amazing. She's really fun gal, great to work with. 
Um, I would definitely recommend her if you're looking to book a gluten-free cruise because she is also gluten-free, so she totally understands. All right, cruising gluten-free. This is actually, cruising is a little more expensive, but it's actually one of, it, it sounds funny, one of the best ways to cruise, one of the best ways to travel if you're gluten-free or you have a food allergy. And this is the reason why, because cruises are very, very service-oriented. And because they're very service-oriented, they want to make sure everything on your cruise is great for you. And you have an awesome experience and you want to come back. And so what they'll do is they will... Um, to give you the menu the night before, and then you tell them what you want, and they'll tell you if they can make it gluten free and almost everything they can make gluten free. And so that's really great. And then also, you can eat as much food as you want on a cruise. So for me, that's super exciting because they make amazing food and I can eat as much as I want. And of course, I always gain weight on a cruise. So I always make sure I'm running in the morning. But cruises are really fun and they're very relaxing. They are a little more on the pricey side. And um, of course, like they're not the most environmentally friendly way to travel. But it's really great way to travel, especially if you're new and you new to be having a food allergy or new to having celiac disease or being gluten free, because it's really easy. So some really good cruise lines that um, I've either taken or have heard. So Disney, Royal Caribbean, and Princess are I've heard um, I've traveled on some of these, and some of these I've heard are really good. Um, they have a good reputation for doing gluten free. You want to make sure you call the cruise line at least 30 days in advance to let them know what you can't eat because you can't just say, can't, you don't want to just show up and say, Hey, by the way, I have gluten free because they still can accommodate you, but it's better if they're prepared. Um, and then call two weeks ahead again to verify the cruise line has your information. Call one week ahead of time because one time I had called, like, I think it was like three months ahead of time. And I called two weeks ahead of time and they didn't have my information in. So you have to verify. You That's the thing with gluten-free travel is you have to be a little more prepared and you need to be really on top of things. Always pack gluten-free snacks in your carry-on bag um, because they will serve food on the cruise. But if there's some delay or whatever and you get hungry, it's really hard to find safe food last minute. So I always carry a couple snacks with me when I travel no matter what. Once you're on the boat, meet and create a relationship with the maitre d'. That is essential to being safe because, and you want to eat in the same dining room. So with a cruise, if you haven't been on a cruise before, all of the regular dining rooms, and I put that in quotes, that are included in your cruise price. So like there's regular dining rooms that are included in your cruise price that you don't have to pay extra for the food. And those have amazing food. Like I'm a foodie and I love the food in the regular dining rooms. There's also dining rooms you can pay for. And I have found that the dining rooms that are included in your price, I get better food, better service. And, um, and, and, and just, it's just, um, I mean, better food, better service. And, um, I don't have to like, um, it's, tell them every time what I need. Um, I actually did get cross contaminated one time on a cruise on a paid restaurant. So I stick to the ones that are included in the price. Um, you want to eat in the same dining room because then the maitre d' remembers you better. And then, and all the dining rooms have the same food anyway, that are included in your cruise price. So ask the, and when you're at the buffet, ask for the chef, they will literally come out and tell you what you can and can't eat. One of the reasons why I like taking Princess Cruise, um, and Disney's really good at this as well, but I know Princess for a fact, um, they don't put any gluten in their salad dressings, their soups, and I believe all their sauces as well. So those three things alone are really, really great if you're gluten-free. And remember, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. So Maria, do we have any questions that need to be answered yet, or should I keep going? I think you can you can just roll ahead guys okay. if you have any more questions go ahead and pop them in the chat there's just been a little bit of dialogue but gotcha all, good. all right so camping gluten-free so one of the things like is similar to road tripping you want to get shelf stable foods um, make sure you get gluten-free pre-made camping foods to heat up with water. I actually love those. I thought they were like the grossest thing ever and I would never try one. My cousin turned me onto those before I was gluten-free. I was like, these are great. They are high in salt. So if you, if you have high blood pressure or any kind of health issue that salt affects, you probably want to stay away from them, but they're really easy. You can heat them up with water because after a long day of hiking, the last thing I'm going to do is a lot of food prep. Um, Pack water and gallon jugs in your car to wash things with, or um, I use that to actually bathe. I used to take gallons of water and just psh, like this, like, you know, biodegradable soap. Um, snacks such as applesauce, tuna, hummus, and other single serving snacks are really great for taking on hikes. And I tell people this, like, I am a big recycler and I'm a big eco person, but when I travel and when I camp, I do a lot of single serving things because I know I'll have safe food to eat. And 
And I've tried doing the repackaging thing when I'm camping and stuff, and it just takes really long and it doesn't work very well. So I do recycle a lot. Then when I, when I, even when I'm traveling, I'll keep stuff in my car for recycling. Um, but using the single certs when you're camping and you're hiking and things like that is just, it's so much more convenient and easier. Um, bring frozen pre-prepared food from home. So one of the things I do for the first couple nights, I'll like put marinade stuff, put it into doubles of black bags, freeze it and then stick it in my cooler and then bring it with me and use those foods for the first couple nights. So they're super easy. Make sure that whatever you're marinating it with is gluten-free because um, gluten, has, there's a liquid form of gluten out there that they put in salad dressings and all sorts of stuff. All right, flying gluten-free. So here's the challenging part of being gluten-free. So you wanna call carriers ahead of time to find out if they do offer gluten-free food or snacks. So I fly a lot on Delta and um, they used to have this really great gluten-free snack. I can't remember the company name, but it was like a pretzel snack mix and it was certified gluten-free. And I loved going and getting that because I knew it was certified gluten-free, I wouldn't get sick. And they took that off of their thing. I was, this was pre-COVID. So I was really bummed about that, but they do have other snacks, but they don't have a lot that are gluten-free now. And they have kind bars, but I'm off of sugar. So that puts kind bars out for me. Um, and so anyway, um, make sure that you bring snacks with you on the plane. Get in touch with somebody from the airline to find out uh, um, about your food diet at least for, at least 48 hours before you fly. Um, it depends on the airline. And in my book, The Guide to Traveling Gluten-Free, I actually have a whole section with links to all the different airlines um, so that you can call and phone numbers so you can call them and find out what their policy is on dietary food. Um, pack snacks, double Ziploc. I tell people double Ziploc everything because I have had protein powder, uh, ch um, chocolate, other food open up inside my luggage that I've checked. Oh my gosh. Let me tell you, the one thing you don't want to happen when you get to a destination is find protein powder all over your clothing. That is a heck of a mess. Um, so anyway, take out snacks and put them in a separate tray when you're doing TSA screening, because that gives you less of a chance of getting tagged. I noticed that when I have my snacks packed in my bag and my backpack, that I get tagged way more than if I put them out on a separate tray, because then they can clearly see it's food and not something that's going to blow up the airplane. Most airlines won't provide more than one specialty diet. So if you're gluten-free and dairy-free, bring your own food because I have not found an airline that will do more than one food preference. Like they'll do dairy-free or gluten-free, but they won't do both. Wipe down surfaces to avoid getting cross-contaminated. I do that as soon as I sit down on the plane, I wipe down the tray. I just have like you know, little um, disinfecting wipes with me. And it's not mainly for the disinfecting, although that does help. <laughs> um, I, it's mostly just so make sure there's no gluten on the surface because I don't want to touch that and then eat food and then accidentally cross-contaminate myself. Um, don't trust a label that just says gluten-free unless it says certified gluten-free. So certified gluten-free, you'll see there's, there's several different um, things, but the most common one you'll see is the circle with the GF. That means it's safe. But if it just says gluten-free, still read the label because there have been instances of products that say they're gluten-free on the package and then they have wheat or other gluten products in it. So don't trust just the gluten-free label. Make sure you read it because I have gotten sick on an airplane before on an international flight doing that and I will never trust the label again. We have a question that's related to airlines. Um, okay. Lawrence, and then I'll come back to Abigail's. Uh, what will airlines do gluten-free and vegetarian? I have not seen an airline that does both. I, usually when they do vegetarian, they'll do, um, they'll do like, they'll do like wheat muffins and stuff like that. So if you're gluten-free and vegetarian, I would say order gluten-free and then just eat whatever in there is, is vegetarian. Okay. And then what are your tips for traveling gluten-free when you don't speak the local language, or if it's not a com common thing in the local culture to be gluten-free? Um, she's especially concerned about this when traveling in Asia and the Middle East. Yeah, so, um, so depending on where you're at, certain places in Asia are better for gluten-free than others. But one thing I always recommend people is to get, it's called a, um, a travel card. So you can find like gluten-free travel cards online and, um, and they, and then you can download those. I print up, I tell people to print up copies, hand them to your waiter in the server. So it's in their language. So they understand what you need. And so that's a really good 
way to tell people that are in another language you don't speak or understand that you're gluten-free. Another thing you can do too is if you can't find it in the language you're going to, when you get to the place, find somebody who speaks good English and their native language and write like write down what you want them to say and have them write it out on a piece of paper and then take a picture of that with your phone, but also get if you can get photocopies of that or email it to yourself. That way if something happens to your phone and it gets damaged, lost or stolen, you still have a copy of that somewhere else. Awesome tips. All right, please proceed. Okay, so other helpful gluten-free travel tips that I didn't think about until I was traveling for a while is one, you wanna avoid paper straws. And that sounds really bizarre. You might be like liquid, but paper straws are better for the environment. They are. However, there are some brands of paper straws that actually use glue, gluten in their glue. So you can get awfully, and also corn, I found out too recently. So you can get really sick from paper straws. What I like to do is I take keep an aluminum straw with me. That way it's environmentally safe. I'm not throwing it out and I don't have to worry about contaminating myself with my straw. And I just rinse it out like in a bathroom, whatever, when I'm done. So um, avoid paper straws. If you feel uncomfortable in a restaurant, like I have done this multiple times where I'm asking questions and the waiter or waitress is like, bada, 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 like really snippy with me. I'm like, mm -mm, I'm walking out, just walk out. Like, don't care if you hurt their feelings because your health is and your vacation and that money you spent your vacation on is a priority, not the person's hurt feelings because they wouldn't answer your questions or they were snippy with you. And even if they're having a bad day, I don't care. Like your health is important. Walk out if you do not feel comfortable and find a different place to eat. All right, call the restaurant ahead of time to make sure they're open. Cause with COVID I've been finding a lot, even on the Find Me Gluten Free app, it says they're open and you, um, in, it says they're open online, but then you go there and either they're not open, they're only taking reservations or they're not doing indoor seating. So always call ahead to verify that the restaurant is open. And if they have sit, sit down dining, if that's what you're interested in, or if they just do takeout. Um, don't accept ever, I think it's gluten-free when you tell, ask somebody, is this, or is this item on your menu gluten-free? And they'll be like, I'm pretty sure it is. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm pretty sure you're not going to be with me in the bathroom for six hours while I'm getting sick. So never accept that. Always tell them, I, I really need you to check with the chef. It's a medical and tell them it's an allergy, even if it isn't, because even if celiac disease isn't technically an allergy, most people don't understand celiac disease, but they do understand allergy and tell them it's medical. That seems so like that most 99% of the time they understand when you say it's medical and you can't eat it, that it is serious for you. It's not a preference that you're just doing it because you're on a fad diet. Um, be proactive. You're often, like I said before, are going to have to educate others who are unfamiliar with food allergies, celiac disease, and you have to be patient with them because they just don't have the experience, the understanding or the knowledge about what you are, you and I are going through. So you just have to be patient with them sometimes. All right. So um, if you want, if you like podcasts or if you haven't listened to podcasts, it's really easy to listen to podcasts. If you're on, if you have an Apple iPhone, like I do, just look for the purple podcast podcast app. And once you open that up, it'll ask you some questions. And once you get through those, you can search travel gluten-free or whatever you're interested in. There's also some really other great travel podcasts on there in general travel um, and sub subscribe and follow my podcast. So you could get every, I put my podcast out every Wednesday, you can get the latest episode. And then also, um, and I have lots of really great, amazing gluten-free travel information on there. Um, you can also go on my website, travelgluteninfreepodcast.com to my blog and find lots of other great travel information that um, all that is also different from what I have on my podcast. So you can find it there. And I also have a gluten-free shop on there as well. So, and I carry a line of cosmetics called Lemongrass Spa, which are all gluten-free and free of hundred chemicals because with autoimmune, you want to stay away from chemicals. So definitely check that out. If you have any questions, definitely go to my website, travelgluteninfreepodcast.com. And when you do go to my website, hit me up on the contact page and um, put in the subject line that you want to enter to win uh, and that you were at the Nomadic Mat Travel presentation today because you will get a chance to win a free copy of my book, The Guide to Traveling Gluten Free. I will author sign it for you, send some like stickers and other cool swag with it. And you will also, you'll get a chance to win the book, but you will get my free ebook, 10 Tips for Gluten-Free Travel, um, when you get on the contact form and, and let me know that you would like the free ebook and you want a chance to win the book. Awesome, thank you so much. I think we have a question in the chat. I'll read it out loud. 
Are there any specific countries or places you have had great experiences traveling gluten-free and any that you would recommend steering clear of? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And I actually talk about these in my book too. Um, so one of the places I absolutely love, if you're going to go one place in Canada, Victoria, because um, the, um, there's a person, uh, Ellen Baines from the celiac scene actually started the gluten-free movement in Victoria like 20 years ago. So you can get like, I've gotten fried fish and chips. There's a tea house there that has um, gluten-free desserts. Like it is amazing, Victoria, Canada. I would definitely highly recommend that. Um, if you're going in, um, let me think. Um, if you're going to Europe, London is amazing. Um, I have not been to Scotland, but I've heard Scotland is amazing, gluten-free. Um, I have not been to Italy, but I've heard amazing things about Italy, except for Rome. I've heard that Rome is like hit or miss, but anywhere outside of Rome. And the reason, and that sounds really counterintuitive, um, but the reason why Italy is so great is because um, Italy has the highest capita per rate of celiac disease. So if restaurants don't do gluten-free, probably the whole family is not coming. So Italy is really great. Um, what else? Let me think. Um, do, 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 do. I'm just trying to think of it. Um, there's certain places in Mexico that are really good. And I know I list them in the book. I, I can't think of them off the top of my head. Um, but Toronto, Canada, I have not been there, but I've heard that is really great as well. Um, let me think. Uh, do, do, do. Some places you don't want to visit. Um, Paris is really hard to do gluten-free. I got cross-contaminated so much when I was in Paris. Um, they, I actually went up to a maitre d' and asked them, do you have any gluten-free options? And he's like, no, you cannot eat here. Do not eat at my restaurant, like literally like that. And I'm like, you're the reason why Paris has a bad rep for being rude. <laughs> so um, Paris, not great. Germany is really hard. Austria, Austria, with the exception of Vienna. Vienna is amazing. Like you can do gluten-free Vienna, but other places in Austria, really hard to do. Um, Gosh, what else? Anything, any place that's like rural in the United States is really hard. But if you're in the US, some really great places to go are New York, Boston, um, Chicago is really great. Um, funny enough, Scottsdale, Arizona, I was just there a couple of weeks ago. There's this, uh, they, there's this Italian restaurant called Picasso's that does all gluten-free, which is amazing. Um, anywhere at the coast of California is really easy to find. Um, the west side of Oregon, Seattle is really great for gluten-free. Austin. So um, I think it's Adam. It was Adam or the other person, Austin. Austin is really great for gluten-free. Austin, Texas. I've been there. Um, let me think. Uh, Disney, actually, anything Disney is really great with food allergies. I've never had an issue with Disney. So those are some suggestions. And I, I have more information about that in my book. Oh, Iceland is also really great for gluten-free. And if you go one place outside the US, anywhere in the world, go to Iceland or London. Like Iceland's amazing. Great suggestions. Love me some Iceland as well. Um, if anybody has any more questions, please do pop them in the chat. Uh, I thought there'd be one, I'm sure that you had mentioned a couple communities for gluten-free tra travelers and of course people that listen to your podcast and follow you as well, but are there any places that people can find one another and easily travel gluten-free? Um, let me think. If it's not on my podcast, if it's not on my platform, um, there's not a very many people who do gluten-free travel. There's one other gal I know that does gluten-free travel really well. Um, because a lot of platforms are gluten-free and they'll do like a little snippet on gluten-free travel, but they're not all about gluten-free travel. The only other one I know of is Jen. Um, her Instagram ha handle is the nomadic Fitzpatrick's, I think it is. So she's the only other one I know who does gluten-free travel as well as I do. Okay. We've got another one. Uh, she said, I used to travel to Africa frequently for work and know it's not super safe, but I still want to go back on safari. Should I just pack a lot of shelf stable foods? Like I'm camping if I do an extended trip like that. Oh, okay. So if you're going to safari, I've got the perfect safari company for you in Africa. So it's in Kenya and it's called Jemu Expeditions. It's J-E-M-U Expeditions, all one word, dot com. And so the man who uh, runs that, his name is James Moenda, and he is the, uh, he is the um, native Kenyan that is responsible for saving the northern white rhino population from ex complete extinction. And if you ever look up the movie Kafaru, he was the one featured in that. It's an indie film that won a ton of awards at Sundance a couple years back. And um, so he actually can do gluten-free safari for you. So definitely check out jemuexpeditions.com. And um, James is really good. Like he understands food allergies because I I've, I've, I work with him and help him write his website content. And so he understands like the whole thing with celiac disease and, and is very good about making sure all of his um, guests are accommodated with their food. Uh, could you say his name again and the movie title? Yes. Yeah. Here, I'll throw it in the chat for you. 
Awesome. Super helpful resource. Perfect. And then one last thing I was kind of wondering, what is some helpful medicine or anything that you should take or travel with in case you get glutened? Yes. I actually just talked about that with my guests on my latest episode that came out yesterday. So, and I have a whole list in my book, but the three, some essential supplements that I take with me. Um, well, let me start out with this one first. Hold on. Let me grab it out of my desk. Okay. So this one I take, so this is actually a prescription um, you need, and any medical provider can prescribe it for you it is a compounded medication, but this is actually something I take on a daily basis and it's called naltrexone. So what it does is it's not an immune system suppressant, but it covers your receptors so that if you do get gluten in your system, your immune system um, it has a hard time, well, won't be able to inflame your body. So you really, and over time, it's really brought down my level of inflammation. Like it's helped with my joint pain and lots of other things. So, and it's natural and it doesn't have a lot of like horrible, it doesn't have like actually any bad side effects. So now Trexone is really great. I take that on a daily basis just for maintenance, but I always make sure I bring extra with me that way in case I get cross contaminated, I can take up to three of them a day to help with like reducing the symptoms. Um, another thing you want to take with you if you're celiac or not, is charcoal. So what charcoal does is charcoal is amazing. I've used it and a lot of people I know have used it. And what we use it for is like to mop up any of the toxins that are in your digestive tract. So if you eat something and your body's like, hmm, I think we're gonna flush that out like the other end, like really quickly, you wanna take charcoal because that helps to bind everything back up together. And it does it like within 24 or 48 hours. And you want to drink a lot of water with it too. And they also give charcoal. And when you go to the vet, if your animals eat something that's toxic, they'll give it to your animals. So charcoal is really great for helping. Like if you have, um, if you've eaten something and your body's trying to get rid of it out the other end. Um, another good thing you always want to take um, on a daily, like I always take on a daily basis anyway, I just took mine this morning is probiotics, but you definitely want to bring them with you because um, depending on the water source and how clean it is, if you don't have good bacteria in your system to fight off that bad bacteria, you can get like sick or, right? and then also probiotics are also going to help you get back your normal flora when your digestive system gets messed up. Um, another thing I take with me is enzymes because enzymes, what they do is they break down your food. And so if I've eaten something, well, I normally take enzymes with my meals anyway, but I always take extra with me when I travel, because if I eat something, and then um, it's like my stomach's really upset. I can take enzymes and it helps break down the food to get it out, like get it out faster. Another thing that's so awesome, I discovered this when I was pregnant with my first daughter is ginger. Oh my gosh. Ginger candy is so amazing. So I do ginger candy that doesn't have a ton of sugar on it. They're actually in these little, uh, it's called, I think it's like chimes, chimes ginger, and they have like plain ginger, ginger with mango. They've got all sorts of flavors, but ginger candy is excellent. Cause you can just pop a couple pieces in your mouth. It really helps settle your stomach. Cause I get motion sick as well. Speaking of motion sick, if you go on a cruise and you get motion sick, skip the drama me, just go to your regular healthcare provider. And, um, what I do is I go to my healthcare provider and ask her to, um, write me a prescription for scopamine patches. And what those are, if you ever see like it looks like someone's wearing a little round band-aid on the back of their ear here. That's actually a scopamine patch. And that is anti-nausea medicine that goes through your skin, but it doesn't make you dopey and drowsy like Dramamine. Cause I don't know about you, but I cannot enjoy my trip if I'm exhausted all the time. So I use scopamine patches when I go on a cruise to help with the nausea. So that's also really helpful too. And I do other recommendations in my book as well. Like I have a whole list of stuff and tell you like what each one does. So you can decide for yourself, which ones you would like to take with you on your trip. Awesome. Sounds like the key here is preparedness and to get your book. <laughs> yes. yes. Being prepared is absolutely 120% of traveling when you're gluten-free. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, a couple of things in the chat. Oh, where can I purchase the edible charcoal? Oh, so, okay. So charcoal is just, just in capsules and you just take it like any other supplement. It's not like a chew. I think they have chewable charcoal too, but a place I love to go to get my supplements. Um, if I'm not at my local health food store is vitacost.com and they do free shipping for orders over $49. And you can just type in charcoal. The brand I like to use is called nature's way. Um, but all of the brands on VitaCost are good vetted brands. They're not like, if you go into the regular supermarket, you can get some brands that like have carnauba wax and some other stuff you don't want to put in your body. But the ones on VitaCost are all, um, are all 
really good brands. And you can also check on the left if you want gluten-free, dairy-free supplements, like vegetarian, all that good stuff. So Vitacost is a really good resource. I use it for all my supplements. Awesome. Does anybody else have any questions? You're welcome to also unmute now that we're kind of just in this Q&A phase. Um, you're welcome to just speak on up. Oh, okay. So Abigail asked, um, there's a supplement called gluten ease that's specifically to help with that. And I think, um, gluten ease is a, um, it's just an enzyme that has extra, uh, it's an enzyme combination that has, uh, uh, what the enzyme to help you break down gluten. And it has more of that enzyme in it, but really any enzymes are better than no enzymes. Um, one I use for is um, I take with me when I travel is from Doctors Best and that's the brand and it's called Gluten Rescue. And so I've used that one before and that's helped to mitigate the symptoms. But just know that these things will not cure you. And if you have celiac disease, you don't want to cheat because it, it's cumulative over time um, and it, it'll make you really sick and there's some really bad things you can get. Um, so anyway, it's not like it's not like you can cheat and, and then take an enzyme and make yourself feel better. You'll still feel horrible. So uh, please only use these if you, if you're really careful with your diet and then you get gluten. Cause you, yeah, you want to be really careful with your diet, especially when you have celiac disease. Yeah. Also Lauren had said the pro tip Imodium has glute gluten in it. So. Yes. Yeah. And I actually heard of um, one, um, what was it? I heard it. So uh, sometimes companies won't put, um, what was it? won't put, um, there won't disclose that they have gluten in it. So you have to call the company. So I heard one, one person I was reading about a person who was taking like antihistamine, like anti-allergy, like allergy medicine. And she kept getting sick and she couldn't figure out why she scrolled through the whole website and found that they use, they used wheat to coat the capsules. So they won't stick to each other. It's like, why would you use a major allergen to coat the capsules? Like makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> So frustrating. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's so insane how much gluten is in everything. Like it's really, you have to be really, really careful. Yeah, clearly. Um, well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. It seems like we might've wrapped up on all of the questions. Many ibuprofen brands, including generics have gluten. Yeah. Unfortunate yeah. That is a thing. <laughs> And I think that's probably why I ended up being allergic to ibuprofen because last time I took it, I had an allergic reaction to it. So I can't even take it anymore. Oh my gosh. Um, all right. Well, I'm just going to wrap up guys. Just hang on for one second while we just go ahead with the outro. Um, thank you so much for all of this helpful information. Um, of course, please connect with um our speaker today and then join nomadic mat plus please nomadic mat will give you tnn event replays a monthly giveaway q a's guides all kinds of stuff you're gonna want to connect connect with us and then check out our upcoming events we've got going on um november 2nd i'll also be hosting this cambodian tuk tuk adventure sounds super fun i'm really excited to hear more about it um so there's a lot going on our book club in november is beyond guilt trips and all of these are free events coming up we've got a couple in person a couple virtual so definitely be sure to sign up at the link and maybe we'll see you there like i said our book club is wednesday november 3rd and it's going to be a really good one um, so thank you guys so much for being a part of our travel community. Um, can we just please give a round of applause? Oh my gosh, great presentation today. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time, all right? Thank you everybody for being here. I appreciate you spending the time with me today. Thank you.